before we saw uh, what are the basic properties derived from ge uh, differential geometry of the surfaces, and that define a surface as uh, convexity, concavity, convergence, and things like that. But we are not still there for the basic analysis. We have derived some properties. In particular, we need to know what is drainage directions and what there is the uh, total contributing areas. <coughs> total contributing areas, at least in a geometrical sense, not in a, in a hydrological sense. Um, when we say drainage directions, so far I talk about gradients, so you can think the drainage direction up to inertia problems are, the gra are along <coughs> the gradients. That's normal thinking to do to it. But there is a problem. The problem is that uh, uh, we went in a direction where we treat all the data uh, as discrete. So we have a grid with discrete data. We don't have a surface. Gradients are defined in a sur uh, continuous surface. And uh, we didn't took the way to interpolate this, the, the grid that with uh, some surface, some splines, and go went in that direction. We simply analyze the data from discrete, discrete as they are. And uh, um, in the discretization, there is also a little bit another problem, which is that we, have a <coughs> we actually have a topology. Because uh, assume that we have the data on a, <coughs> on a triangular grid. <coughs> then each point has six <coughs> points around it. So actually, from the discrete point of view, you can go from here to here in six di different directions but not in all the direction uh, 30, uh, 360 degrees or 370 70, as some Italian politician says. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and uh, actually we have this topology which is rectangular topology or a square topology actually. In a square topology we have four next neck boards. When you discretize uh, a thing like this for and use a partial differential equation for solving, usually you use four directions. But, but in the tradition of DM analysis, we go in that direction, meaning that uh, when probably David and Bottom for first, or uh, the other guys, that there were some other guys went to the left say, okay, go in this direction or just going in this direction and not going in the other one is going to, to be a strong limitation. <coughs> so they, they considered a, a topology that they call D8 with eight directions in which you can go from here to here, from here to here, also in a sense through the angles. So we have to choose a topology, and we work with the D8 topology. Unfortunately, when you, even if you go to the A topology, you have just eight direction, not infinite ones, or at least one for any degree, 360. So what happens? Uh, it happens that uh, maybe you agree Assume that this is the base of your grid, my table here. But if, the t if my slope, real slope is like this, I am okay because my grid is like this, is parallel to my slope and there is no problem. The gradients are all in this direction. There is not any problem if you, we are 45 degrees like this because then I am going in the, just in the angle, according to the, the topology D8. So we don't do any error. But now assume that you are in a position which is in between. You actually don't, don't know where you are going. You 
you can make an error which is as much as to, uh, to uh, 22 dot, uh, dot 5 uh, degree of error. So you can start going to Rome and actually you go in the middle of uh, in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, for instance, that from a certain point of view. So if you just consider the, 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 the eight direction, and uh, if you have <coughs> the, your topography is pretty planar and in the wrong, oriented in the wrong direction with respect to the grids that you are choosing on this, that simply you are finding from the projection, you can have a, a degree a, a, an error on, on the flow directions. So actually, to, for correcting this, we uh, use a method that was promoted by Stefano Landini and others in 2003. We say, okay, we can do an error, but uh, we compare the gradient actually that we calculate is it goes from zero to uh, 360 degrees, the aspect, the real, the, the, the gradient the real gradient <coughs> as all the is a real number. But we have just one direction, so we have the, the, the real direction the, uh, gave from the, uh, the gradient. We, we are obliged to go in one of the eight directions, and so we do an error. <coughs> For instance, here we do a delta one, alpha one error with respect to the direction three. So we take into account of this error when we follow the gradients, and when the error is larger than a certain amount that we can decide, we correct to the other directions in order not to have very much big directions, error in directions. Later we will see when this really counts and where it doesn't count. So in this way, we have the D8, the D8 path. We can uh, go following uh, not the gradient, but the D8 directions <coughs> built in that way. And uh, we have maps of the D8. We have eight colors here, and we have them for all the Europe from the SRTA. You can do, obviously, in one of, uh, of our catchment, in particular to the Meledio catchment that we, we, we are analyzing. Is quite, it seems like a noisy map, random, quite random, or at least quite distributed along all, all the directions. It's not always this case, but, uh, uh, but this is what it happens. This is the same picture from a, uh, from a smaller basis, actually, but here you see a little bit more that there are preferential directions, at least in, in part of the catchment. For instance, here you have a direction which is, um, or here or, or there, I, I don't know, but you distinguish, you distinguish the, the different topography. So the smaller scale is not as much uh, as random as the large Europe. You have preferential selection, apparently, of the directions. Uh, actually, this map here are, are just numbered between one to eight, or in another classification, eight different numbers. Nothing particularly special. So, you did, you feel, uh, feel any depression. So this means actually that in any point you have a gradient and the gradient tells you what is the direction, the prefer preferential direction of water flow. So you are in the case that you have up there where any point is finally connected to an output here. So you start from uh, st uh, up there on the top, top left, you go, you follow the arrows, you go forward, four things down, then you go again down and you blow up out of here. Okay, and this is valid for any point. Now here we have one to six, four, 
636 points, 35 points, actually, I don't know why, why 35 should be 36, okay, and uh, this means that you can, uh, if you sit vice versa in any point, you can count how, how many how many points you have uphill of yours. 35 because probably you can't, you doesn't count yourself. But you can count down yourself and doesn't change anything. Okay, you start from zero in fact. If you count yourself, you start from one and then you, you have 36. So in this case, uh, uh, you have two new, you have the flow direction <coughs> in any point and you have also the flow accumulation which is maybe ah uh, we uh, we say the areas the areas of the catchment actually is not the areas because the area is inclined is a 3d surface this is the planar projection of the area of our catchment yes and so uh, in, in in the sea in the single way we define another thing which is the flow accumulation which is what I often call the total contributing area so someone disputed in the 90s that the name total contributing area because it, uh, she said that uh, in the uh, in reality not the all the area is contributing to the runoff but the, uh, let's say this is a, a uh, uh, geometrical accumulation. At, at the present, it doesn't have any hydrologic, real hydrological meaning. It's the total area we have on our back. If we do, there are a, a few programs that uh, you will be, be asked to run, maybe tomorrow morning at this point. And uh, if you run these things, you obtain a map like this one where the uh, uh, it, it is better represented if you take a logarithmic scale on colors and there is a reason for a uh, reason for that uh, you recognize here that is the flangidec basin the one that has a flat area there <coughs> and uh, you also recognize from the shape and you see where the area is larger you see the red one, it looks like there is something that trans resembles a river network. Also, yesterday I talked about river networks, but I didn't tell you how to obtain the river network so far. Actually, obtaining the real river network is an operation that requires some procedures. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, um, I... Uh, we have this error of direction, which I already mentioned. I have another, we have another error because of the discretization, meaning if we are in a, if we are in a planar surface, nothing is going on. The gradient is going here, is like this here, and like he, this here. The two gradients measure at the angles of, the, of my tile are parallel. You know, um, this gra the gradients go in, the di in this direction here and go in this direction here. So the, two, the, the flow is parallel. There is no particular um, problem here because all, I can think that all the area here flows in the, in the tile below without any problem. But now look at the surface like this one, which is much more complex. It looks particularly at the divergent part here. In the divergent part, what happens in the, in the, at the end of the tiles, water flow like this. So some people argue that uh, when you have an area here flowing down, if you have a, a, a convex topography, the water, uh, water is not really flowing in the tile below, but it's flowing a little bit in the tile below and a little bit also in the uh, tile which are on the left and on the right. Now I am destroying my uh, my
my eyes are for doing that. <laughs> this is not so relevant in any case in the convergent part of the of the topography because in the convergent part the the flow direction are like this. So they are not parallel, but all is going to the same in the same tile from this tile to the tile below because it is convergent that's the meaning of convergent actually. so the error that you can do actually is only on divergent in slope in the convex hill slopes that we learn to recognize from the curvatures for this uh, this is a, a more real and more real uh, landscape which is uh, you have transition from convex to concave much more defined so in the convex in the convex area in the, con in the convex area you have the flow that is going to diverge to correct these things in the D8 David Tarbotton suggested this D infinity method that has a, a huge fortune in literature because of what he did was like, uh, okay, he, he uh, discovered the method, maybe it's not uh, really <coughs> geometrically founded, but he say, okay, he, he just implemented the idea that if you have, a, if you are in a, in a divergent uh, type of topography, you put a little bit of the area also on the side. And uh, so when you accumulate the flow, you, the flow here is not 1 plus 1, 2. It is 1 plus 0 0.8. This is particularly important for transport, for example. <coughs> because it means that you have less water, less sediment. And there are a lot of consequences on the small geomorphology. And for instance, on the topic of initiation of channels. Because uh, Probably with the, the, the crude V8, you are doing some error in calculating the <coughs> amount of runoff that you are creating if it, if you doesn't account properly for the flow directions. In fact, this error, this second error of due topography, I, we are, you, say, you saw, if you did the analysis before, that uh, uh, curvatures are really small, except in few pa points. So in reality, this spreading is very limited. Okay, it's very limited. Usually, uh, in, in <coughs> there, we have at some point where it, where there is a strong convergence, and that strong convergence is where more or less the channel begins, as we we will say in the next in the next talk. So, summarizing, when you have your catchment, you do your gradients, you have the drainage, you derive the drainage directions. Actually, first you go in the, the D8, then you correct a little bit the D8 for taking care of this error that you can have. Mm -hmm. Then you accumulate the flow, you have the uh, flow accumulation, the total contributing area. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and so you gain information about your catchment. <laughs> Still, we are not again information where the, the channels begin actually but we are getting closer anyway even if we don't know where the channels begins now we are able to separate catchments because we sit in a point we know all the points that flow in this point here uphill mm -hmm. and then once we know all the point we are able also to reconstruct the, as you see there the contour of the things. Actually, this uh, this uh, operation include a new a new stuff because uh, while the raster before the, the DM was a raster, what we call a matrix of number, usually the contour are uh, are uh, uh, stored in computers by different vectorial type of, of information, a condensed type of information, which is uh, in shape files, what you what you will see. So we at a certain moment we have <coughs> to combine the raster with the shape files. 
then if you have the shape files, here you have also extracted the network. You can uh, plot, it, uh, plot it on Google Earth or something similar. This is World NASA World Green, which is another virtual globe. And you can see, you can produce images like this one. Actually, when you have uh, uh, flowing directions, you can also do, let's say, calculate distances. You can calculate the distance, the outlet is here, and you have also to determine where the outlet is for some uh, procedure. Uh, and you you go, you follow the drainage direction, you can, you can calculate the distances from the, uh, from the outlet. This is a problem, this is common also to the ecological problem with the web, how distant you are from there. If we go straight, this is the thing, I am obliged by the energy direction to do a round trip, and you see that there, there are actually close <coughs> that are quite different, as we see from the color, quite different distances from the outlet. This, is some, this has some hydrological <coughs> significance. And I published a, a few papers on that that have quite a little bit of fortune on, on the formation of the form of the, of the flood. Because uh, we argued that this type of information has an influence on, on the form of the flood. And actually what we argued was my first paper a lot of years ago is that the form of, of, of this stuff, which is called width function, when reduced <coughs> to things, is more important than the hydrodynamics. The form of the overall form of the of, uh, of the of the flat of the flat curves is mostly due to the form of the basis, not to the, for instance, to the small effect of hydrodynamics and we call them hydro, uh, geomorphological disper dispersion. Okay. Much different is the Euclidean distance, just a plot, plot here for a, an example. And you see that, yeah, it, it, say, it says we, we trace cir circles around the outlet and we have see how the distance and the difference obviously is high, so uh, there is not the Euclidean distance that is producing the flood. So more or less, uh, this is uh, the information you can have, we can have from uh, tracing the directions. We are not still there to know where the river network exactly is, but is what we can learn from uh, the next the next lecture. So, but for here we. At the moment, we stop here.